Okay, we've got a fun problem here today. We've got the integral from zero to one of one over the square root of minus ln x dx. Okay, so I was really liking this one. It's like a nice combination of being very easy and like still kind of rewarding and a satisfying solution. So first looking at the concern I had was we got a minus sign inside the square root. If everything's gonna be negative inside the square root, then we've got a problem with it. What happens is the key thing here is the bounds. We're going from zero to one. And so when our x values are between zero and one, natural log x, this is always gonna be less than zero. So minus times a negative number, now everything in the square root is gonna be positive. So this is gonna be no problem at all. So to get started with this, I'm gonna kinda of do the obvious thing and let's do a u substitution to clean this up. So you could do u equal to natural log x. I think that would be okay, but what I actually wanna do is u minus ln x. And then let's rearrange this and get a value for x. Like I could just bring the minus sign on the other side and we get u, minus u equals ln x. Isolate the x with log properties, we get x equals e to the minus u. Then let's go ahead, get a derivative here. dx is gonna be just minus e minus u du. We'll go ahead, let's use this one right here to substitute. So first we'll plug in one here. Natural log at one is zero, so this is gonna be just zero for the upper bound. Then plugging in zero, natural log zero is minus infinity times minus gives me positive infinity here. dx is gonna be minus e minus u du. And then this here, we've said this, all this stuff is gonna be just our u. So we end up here with square root of u. Let's use this minus sign here. We can just use it to swap our bounds so we get the larger value up top. Then let's take this, we'll bring this into the numerator. And instead of writing it like a square root, I'm gonna write it as one half or minus one half. So we'll have, this is gonna become integral from zero to infinity, u minus one half, e minus u, du. And then for this right here, we notice that this is exactly set up to use the gamma function on it. Or I guess technically maybe not exactly because this exponent should look a little different. To match the formula for minus one half, Let's just write minus one half as one half minus one. And then for our formula, the input to the gamma function is just gonna be this piece right here. And so everything here, this is gonna be the same thing as gamma of one half. But for this right here, it's a really well-known value. I usually try to remember one value of the gamma function and you can calculate everything else off that. And the value I remember is gamma of one half. And so for the value of gamma one half and for our final solution, we just get square root of pi. And so looking back on what we did, you can kind of see why I wanted the minus sign there because then we get e minus u, which sets up the gamma function. Also, we get infinity instead of minus infinity. I guess you could do it the other way and just do another substitution, but this kind of gets it set up a little nicer. Anyway, there you have it. Thanks everyone for watching today. Have a good day.